a part of me is happy as a Steelers fan that this happened, but just a tiny, tiny, tiny part of me feels a little bad for the Baltimore Ravens. Just, just a tiny part of me. Because earlier this today, this morning actually, it was announced that the Ravens would go to Arrowhead Stadium opening night of the 2024 NFL season when the Chiefs would raise their second straight Super Bowl banner at Arrowhead and the Ravens would go there for opening night. You say, Bryson, why do you like? Why do you feel sorry for them? Oh, just because they're going to lose? It's one of 17. Like, who cares? One loss is one loss. The Ravens were the one seed last year. Excuse me, were the one seed last year. Here's the thing. I looked back at this. And it's actually kind of scary. Playoff rematches on opening night don't tend to go well for the losing team. As, especially if the losing team isn't the defending champion. Well, the Ravens will undoubtedly be the underdogs in Kansas City. A Chiefs win. The Chiefs, a Chiefs win is far from guaranteed, obviously. It's the NFL. But... If the Chiefs win, I'm not even kidding when I say this, I think it could derail the Ravens' season. Part of that's history. I'm a believer. History often repeats itself. We can go and show you right here. So the last four last four times we've had a playoff rematch on opening night of the NFL season. Defending champs versus a team they beat in the playoffs, and the team they beat in the playoffs loses again on opening night. We can show you right here the last four examples. 2020, the Chiefs beat the Texans on opening night. 8, 2018, the Eagles beat the Falcons on opening night. 2016, in what was a Super Bowl rematch, the Broncos beat the Panthers on opening night. And in 2010, the defending champion Saints beat the Vikings on opening night. You say, Bryson, what, what, why does that matter to me? I'll tell you exactly why it matters. How did those teams, Falcons and, I'm sorry, Texans in 20, Falcons in 18, Panthers in 16, Vikings in 10, how did they fare the next season? The Texans missed the playoffs. The Falcons missed the playoffs. The Panthers missed the playoffs. And the Vikings missed the playoffs. Now, of course, injuries come into the fray. Th that does matter. But I think there's a psych. It takes a psychological. You, know, you can take a psychological blow as a football team and even individually certain players if you think about, okay, we lost to this team. That team, we, the team we lost to, we've been thinking about them constantly all season long because it was them who stopped us from going on a long run, we thought we could have won the Super Bowl. Remember Brett Favre threw the interception in the Superdome. The Vikings were a field goal away from going to the Super Bowl. He throws the pick. Saints win in overtime. You know, the Texans, right? The Texans had a 24-0 lead on the Chiefs and end up getting blown out. Like, it was crazy. The Falcons lost the Eagles against Nick Foles. Well, then they play Nick Foles in week one, and Nick Foles beats him again. And in 2016, the Broncos, who had lost Peyton Manning to retirement, Panthers bring everybody back, MVP Cam, and they lose to Trevor Simeon making his first NFL start, and the Broncos. We've been thinking about this team constantly, nonstop, all season long, and we lose to him again. And they raise the banner that we felt like we should have raised. That can take a psychological blow to a franchise. I think it could happen if you're the Ravens. Because the fact of the matter is, the Ravens do play, in my mind, the, the toughest division of football. I mean, the, the Bengals were missed Joe Burrow for the second half of the season. Still ended up being on the doorstep of the playoffs. The Pittsburgh Steelers were in quarterback hell all season long. Mitch Trubisky, Mason Rudolph, Kenny Pickett. Need I remind you as a Steelers fan? Won 10 games and made the playoffs. Okay, the Cleveland Browns, similar situation. Quarterback hell. Joe Flacco. What had to be the savior at the end of the Brown season? Yeah, they they made the playoffs, won eleven games. The division was brutal. You anticipate Cleveland will be better next year, in theory, but it is Cleveland. You know, it's 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 Cleveland. The Steelers. I don't think Russ is going to be uh, exactly winning Super Bowls in Pittsburgh. He's better than what they had last year. The Steelers will be better at that position, and the Bengals get this guy Joe Burrow back. Assuming he's healthy, they'll be a threat. So you play in an already brutal division. You play the defending champs opening night. And the history is the last four times we've had a defending champion beat the team they beat in the playoffs the year prior. That team, the losing team, often goes on to miss the playoffs in the last four instances that we've tracked going back to 2010. Even worse for the Baltimore Ravens. I think Patrick Mahomes' only legitimate rival quarterback-wise in the NFL is Joe Burrow. 
Joe Burrow's 3-1 and one against Mahomes. Joe Burrow's beaten. Joe Burrow's the only active quarterback playing that is that can say, I beat Patrick Mahomes in a playoff game. Nobody else can say that. Brady can say it, but he's retired now. Only active guy to say, I beat Mahomes in the playoffs. Josh Allen can't say that. He's 0-3 against Mahomes in the playoffs. Lamar Jackson's 0-1 the playoffs against Mahomes. And even worse, if you combine his regular season stats, we can show you the comparison. When Mahomes and Lamar play each other, which we have five games of evidence, five games of data, going back to 2018, which was the first year that Mahomes and Lamar were starters in the NFL. What happens when they play? Uh, oh, Mahomes is way better. Lamar's eight touchdowns, Mahomes is 14. Lamar's turned the ball over six times, Mahomes has turned the ball over twice. Lamar completes about 55% of his passes, Patrick completes about 72% of his passes. Lamar, this is including rushing, by the way, has about 275 yards per game, Mahomes has 354 yards per game. This is striking right here. Lamar has a passer rating against Mahomes, head-to-head, -head, of 78. Mahomes has a passer rating against Lamar, and those great Ravens defenses, of 115. Mahomes has won four games. Lamar has won once. I, and by the way, I, I say this as the Lamar guy. I'm one of the few Pittsburgh fans who, who lo I've been loved Lamar Jackson since, since his first MVP year. I think the guy's spectacular. I think all of the, the narratives and the notions around Lamar, oh, he can't throw. He can't do this. He can't do that. He continues to debunk that every single year. The one thing that Lamar Jackson has not done that folks doubt he can do is go to and win a Super Bowl. That's it. He's won two MVPs. Only other guy can say that playing right now is, is Mahomes and Rodgers, but Rodgers is almost done. He's done everything else. He's won playoff games. He's won MVPs. He's shown he can throw a football to high level, leveling and touchdown passes. He's, he's, he's proven all those things incorrect. He's just not on that guy's level. It's the thing I push back for, for all of last year, certainly in the lead-up to the playoff game and in the aftermath of the playoff game when the Chiefs beat the Bills. Oh, Mahomes, Allen, it's a rivalry. No, it's not. It is not. Mahomes, Allen has gotten outplayed. Even in the even in the game, the 13 seconds game, Allen has gotten outplayed by Mahomes every single time that they played in the playoffs and lost every single time that they played in the playoffs. So I think the Ravens have a. I mean, they can't. They're not going to get the game rescheduled or anything. I think they have a legitimate gripe to the NFL. Like okay, you got to be kidding me. Uh, we, we lost to this team in part because we had a terrible game plan in part because the Chiefs had an awesome defense and Mahomes played mistake-free football. We've been thinking about them constantly. And if we lose to them on banner nights, it's just, again, now now Lamar Jackson falls to 1-5 and five against, against Patrick. It, it, it's, it's a domino effect that could result in the Baltimore Ravens. I don't want to say missing the playoffs, but certainly not winning the division with, I'd argue, the best roster. Pittsburgh's close, but the best roster in the division. So, Schedules are schedule leaks are coming over and they're going to continue to come up until it's this full schedule is released on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. But uh, yeah, that 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 uh, I think the Ravens. <laughs> I, I'm happy about it as a Steelers fan. I, I think the Ravens kind of got screwed over a little bit by by the schedule makers. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube and be sure to go click that big red subscribe button and check out the other clips and full shows from Carving It Up Live as well as our other incredible content creators here on the Grid Network.